First question is from Mark O'Reilly Duval. What are the benefits of sumo deadlift over regular deadlift? You know, it's the the thing about those two exercises is in I blame powerlifting for this. Powerlifting competition treats both the same. But they're so different. They're yeah. very they're two different exercises. Uh, but if you're in a powerlifting competition and it's time to do a deadlift, you have the choice of pulling sumo or pulling deadlift. So because of that, and because deadlift really gained most of its popularity through powerlifting, and then only later became a big deal for developing muscle, strengthening the body, improving mobility and functional strength and all that wonderful stuff. Because its roots were in powerlifting, people started to think that they were interchangeable. They're, they're not. They're, they're, they're different exercises. Um, they're, yes, both posterior chain dominant. Uh, there's a lot more hip involvement in sumo deadlift. Um, the positioning's total di totally different. There's more back involvement with a regular deadlift. And I think you should treat them um, like different exercises. Now, sure. th does this mean you should do both? I don't necessarily think you have to do both. Um, I do both every once in a while because I think they're they're both very valuable. Um, but uh, and you'll find one will probably suit you more. T tall, lanky people like the regular more than the shorter people tend to like, and females tend to do better um, with sumo. But uh, the benefits, I mean, more hip involvement, more adductor. You know, these are the inner thigh involvement, less uh, potential stress on the low back. So some people who think it's a safer uh, type of deadlift. Um, although I can argue, you know, that it could be just as dangerous. But yeah, totally different exercise. If you're if you're trying to build your butt and you're not doing sumo deadlifts, you're missing out. It's it was one of the staple exercises that I would teach to somebody that was wanting to. And the reason why I think it it's it's such a great exercise for that is because very few people, uh, you know, move in uh, you know move laterally or exercise that way and get your glute meat involved. And the sumo, because you're in this wide open stance and the knees are forced out and your feet are externally rotated, the glute meat is really turned on in that exercise. And there's just not a lot of like uh, stationary exercises that you are that's really lit up. Hard. Especially not with heavy load, right? Especially with heavy load. So, and that and to simplify that for a person is like that's the side butt. You know, that's what gives you that look from the, the side or the heart shape of a butt. So if you're trying to develop a butt and you don't do zoom, sumo deadlift, I think it's the, the single one of the single best exercises besides maybe like a hip thrust that you can be doing mm -hmm. to build your glutes. Uh, I also think that it's good for corrective stuff. So mm -hmm. very, very common that I would see people, uh, their, their knees cave in when they squat or feet mm -hmm. pronating. And yes, that has a lot to do with the feet, but a lot of times because the feet pronate, the knees cave in, the glute med turns off. Mm -hmm. So teaching that for corrective purposes, mm -hmm. I see tons of value in that also. So if you want to build a butt, you also want to deal, uh, if you've got somebody who has got knees caving in or feet pronating, training them in a sumo and teaching them to open their knees out is a great, great movement for corrective reasons too. And it's a like a different exercise, like Sal was saying, it's more hip, less back, and then your conventional is the opposite. Yeah, uh, you know, it, uh, did you guys ever pull sumo for a long period of time? Is that ever? It took a while to to start messing around with that, and then you you, you start to figure out like based on sort of your preference what works best. Uh, in in for sumo for me actually, I would pr it would probably serve me better. Really? Yeah, to do sumo just because of the with leverage and the, in the, the way that my hips. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess that I don't know. Like, but yeah, like I, I've definitely messed around with with clients to see you know which one that they preferred and which one they had better leverage. That's with. how I first deadlifted. That's yeah. how that's how I first learned how to deadlift with sumo. It's the first time I pulled three plates with sumo um, as a kid, and then I switched to conventional. I just felt so much more natural. Yeah. And I've pulled that way ever since. I mean, to me, that's the, the bad part about this. And you, you pointed that out early on when we first started this conversation is that I think people look at it like, Oh, I, I do one or the other. Yeah. I'm better at sumo. So I do sumo or I'm yeah. better at conventional yeah. when really they're very different exercises that both belong in your routine. So whoever is listening, if you sumo all the time, you absolutely should incorporate conventional. And if you're somebody who always conventional, you absolutely should incorporate sumo. It's the same way I look at squats too. Like there's multiple versions of right. squats yep. um, and it's they're all beneficial in different uh, aspects of it. And so that's why I do try to squat with, with a narrow stance, with a wide stance, mm -hmm. uh, externally rotated. Um, and, you know, even like the loading of, of the squat, I change it up quite a bit. So this is just another way that you can acquire other types of benefits from a deadlift. 